Hello and welcome to today's Wild Hearthstone deck tech and gameplay video on what is, I guess you could argue, technically an update to my Death Rattle Warlock list that I did a long time ago. But it's technically new with the addition of the, oh, what's the name of the card? Uh, there we are. With the uh, tourist mechanic that came out and with uh, Perils and Paradise or whatever the name of the set is. So this is, as you can see from the name, a Death Knight lock. Basically meaning that it's a Death Rattle Warlock Knight that takes advantage of Summoner Dark Marrow being a Death Knight tourist, allowing us to add, add only Death Knight cards that are f from Perils and Paradise, and that's it. What that really equates to in this list are just two cards. Horizon's Edge, and where is the name of the card? Brittle Bone Buccaneer. They're really the only two Death Rattle cards that are, like, terribly worth it to add in a list like this. There are technically other ones available, as you can see, but these don't really meet with, sort of, or not meet, mesh with what the deck wants to do. Which is, play just loads of Death Rattle creatures that either care about Death Rattles or have death rattles themselves where like a foul egg has death rattle itself or an undertaker cares about playing other death rattle cards same thing with like devourer of souls so we take our various death rattle cards like your eggs either nerubian or foul eggs or your naval mines or loot hoarders or geodes again basically cards that have death rattles themselves that you want to activate or get use out of and or cards that care about death rattles I want to play them early on and sort of hit with like a mid-game spike of like a lot of damage if you can. Now, how do you say trigger all of these death rattle uh, effects in a more reliable way other than waiting for your opponent to kill them? There are several ways you can do that. One is with Sumner Dark Marrow himself. Themself? Himself. We'll assume. Not to be rude. But basically where... The summoner here lets our death rattles trigger try twice, regardless. And uh, whenever we play a death rattle, we destroy it, which would again, in this case, trigger it twice. So that's one way we can use to manually trigger our death rattles. Another couple ways are a couple copies of Shallow Grave to get a couple instances of any given death rattle, or even cards like Grim Rally and Grimoire of Sacrifice to just hard destroy a thing and get some degree of value out of it. And in the third category, these aren't cards that... Well, they are also all Death Rattle related, but they don't trigger the Death Rattles themselves. Horizon's Edge is just a way to get a lot of damage out on the board. And since you're going to have creatures dying all the time anyway, it's pretty easy to get repeated uses out of the Horizon's Edge. And even carbs, cards like Habeas Corpses... Ahaha give us additional copies, air quotes you can't see me make, of our death rattles that we can use again to whatever particular effect we might need. We also have a couple of just high, either high-end cards or just general glue cards because the deck does need some help. Ziliax is like an okay high-end threat that helps board stabilize. Jaraxxus is a good late-game threat because eventually... Your hero power is just going to get you killed, and hey, sometimes having a Jaraxxus spitting out Infernos and punching them with Blood Furies will be enough to get you over that little hump between the mid-game and late-game, where after the late-game really starts, the deck starts to struggle. We also have a couple copies of Gul'dan's Gift to just have access to more controlling tools or ways to respond without having to take up so many slots in the deck. And that's the basics of the list. Again, we just play Death Rattle cards, our cards that care about Death Rattles, blow them up manually, and just try and win before we have to get to our late game, at which point it's going to be a little rough. But anywho, that's all for the list. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and would like to see more in the future. And if you have any sort of questions like, I don't have X, what about Y, or other generally nice and or constructive comments, Go ahead and leave them down below, and I'll do what I can to respond to what I see. For example, 
before I'll go in, I'll talk about the uh, where it is, the Summoner Dark Marrow. This is a cool card and it's a cool ability, but I don't think it makes the deck any stronger or weaker than previous versions of the list. It's it it doesn't if you think about the abstract or think about this deck's performance in the abstract. This deck, the the addition to the Death Knight, or the addition of Death Knight Tourist thing, like the whole little package, it doesn't affect the deck on the x-axis in that win weight grow up or win rate go down. It affects it on the y-axis, where it's neither better nor worse, it's just different going in either direction. So if you don't have a Dark Marrow, you don't strictly need it or the Death, uh, or the death Knight cards that the deck provides. They're nice and they're fun, but like if you don't have it, you can sort of cobble together a version without the Death Knight cards or the Death Knight Tourist card, and you'll largely be okay. You can pretty much look to older versions of this video on the channel if you want to go back, if you want to see a Warlock-only version of this list. But anywho, now we're on to game number one. And game number one with our little... Death Knight Warlock, or Death Rattle Death Knight Warlock, or however you want to word it. And this is a perfectly fine hand. We have a one drop, things to do after it. The coin is always nice. And an Undertaker on turn one, if left unanswered, can get really, really big and scary very fast. In theory. Granted, there's a whole lot of screwy bits that can go sideways between here and there, but that's neither here nor there. Since we have coin, we might as well go ahead and coin the Foul Egg. Since Hunter doesn't have the best access to just, like, destroy target creature, we want to do what we can early on to climb the uh, Undertaker out of range of the damage base removal that Hunter has on hand. Uh, sure, we'll just Shallow Grave the Egg. Make it big and scary. Would have been great to draw a Death Rattle card. But not for nothing. Uh, what's this? An 8-9 on turn 2 worth of stats? It's not bad. Okay, that's going to, in theory, suck. But honestly, yeah, there's not a whole lot of... Okay, so he's not... I don't think that it's... Um... Let's see, I don't think that it's Explosive Trap, because you can make the argument if it was, you would have traded in. Anything? No. Now, I could just be getting jabated, and this will suck if it is Explosive. It's not. Uh. Yeah, we'll play the Cultist. And if it gets sniped, I was about to say, if it gets sniped, that's fine. Cultus is one of those good cards that, you know, it's an okay body with Death Rattle. And this decking, the, not only this deck, but of course Warlock in the abstract, dude with hero power, can get a little low on life. So any way to, like, get little bits of, like, health back here and there is nice. And, you know, it is a Death Rattle. Kind of just does what the deck wants to do. Uh, Yeah, we'll play Horizon's Edge. Why not? Would love for this to kill the... The, the, the bird, but even if it doesn't, I don't think I care, actually. I think we just go face. Um, the only thing I can think of of those secrets is, like, a f uh, Ice Trap, I think, is the one that makes the spell cost more. I mean, okay, I don't know what our opponent's deck is. It could be, like, a, like a Reno thing. They're running a lot of really weird one-of cards. So there's an argument to be made to, like, maybe not go super all-in to try and just bonk our opponent. But maybe we also just get to that point where we just make our opponent have to have the thing. Uh... Do I hero power, or do we just Gul'dan's gift for, like, a siphon soul? Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll just go ahead and get rid of it. Or if it's an ice trap. Okay, then that that changes things. That's fine. Alright, in that case, we just go face with the rest. I do feel somewhat vindicated that I did actually call that correctly. It was an ice trap. I guess he got a five cost weapon? Yeah. Does that... Okay, so that doesn't... So the adjacent damage thing is only from the weapon hit itself and not from the battle cry, which is nice. Uh... Might as well start using some Horizon's Edge here. Or whatever. That's the name of that card? Yeah. Uh, so I guess we can do a Loot Hoarder. And then do a Grimoire Sacrifice, clearing a board. Let's see what we draw. Again, get some Horizon's Edge value out of this. And I think we actually have Lethal, since we're going to do a Foul Egg. And then Grim Rally the Egg we just played. Let our board our now our other egg attack now and deal like three more damage. Hell yeah! <laughs> Honestly, that's a good showing for the list and sort of what I talked about in the deck tech portion of it. This is a deck that has like that that really thrives on like those middle turn like power spikes where you can through really interesting like sequencing can like pump out a fucking load of damage. In the mid game turn, since as the game goes later on, uh, the deck can struggle. Of course, you know, it can still win, and Jaraxxus does go a long way to do that, to being able to eventually spit out six sixes every turn. But that's nice, but you can't always rely on it. But anywho, with that out of the way, we'll go on now to game number two. And game number two with our little Death Knight Warlock. Death Rattle, Death Knight, Warlock, or whatever you want to call it. This is almost a great hand. Guess we can throw back... Well... Guess the Edge and the Geode here. Having the Grimoire of Sacrifice... Hell yeah! Having the Grimoire of Sacrifice will help if it's like a more like piratey aggro thing. Uh, if it is, though, like uh, like a Burgle Rogue, that can be a little bit difficult to overcome. If they run the quest, that immune weapon thing they get is very hard to come back from. Or even just a Spectral Cutlass can get really rough really fast. And we have Coin again, so in this case we'll just do like we did last game. And Coin into an Egg. Of course, I have another Egg next turn. Rogue has more access to just destroy target thing, but those cards don't really see play often. Of course, is it possible they run, you know, your assassinate style cards? Is okay. So it does appear to be some sort of pirate thing. They either don't have um, patches or they're, it, it's in his hand, which is fine. I think we will actually Ghoul Dance Gift and Mortal Coil. This being another good example of... I I really like the flexibility of Gul'dan's gift. I don't have a whole lot of experience with the other gifts besides uh, Garrosh's gift, which I think is good. Sometimes it's nice to just have, you know, a good, like, smattering of choice in one card that can give you access to various answers in any given situation. That, And yeah, you could argue that, like, sometimes it'd be better to be, have a more permanent copy in your hand... But I'm cool with the temporary restriction and a one minute tax being on a a almost like a Zephyrus style effect where I can answer most board states. I think that's a perfectly acceptable trade to make. Ooh, we have the Buccaneer. Um, in that case, I guess we can play the Buccaneer. Next turn, see what happens here. We can always play the Horizon's Edge if we want to, or if the Buccaneer stays alive, we can just play a couple of our Death Rattle dudes. It's not going to be great. Okay. We good? I don't know if I care. Huh. 
maybe actually the right... Ooh. Yeah, maybe the right play is to actually Grimoire of Sacrifice here. I mean... Okay. Yeah, I was going to probably ruin their whole career. I wasn't going to initially put in three games, but this video... Or this game in this video is only going to be like three minutes. <laughs> so we will go ahead and go on now to game number three. And game number three with our little Death Knight Warlock. And like always, just looking for things to do ideally on turn one. We'll keep a naval mind if nothing else. Hopefully we'll draw something. Devourer of Souls will do just fine. I will be honest though. Uh, I've seen a resurgent... Oh, that's even arguably better. Go ahead and play the Undertaker on one. But what I was going to say was that I've seen, in my own experience, uh, a whole lot of either like long, controlly kind of druid decks or like new versions of some... Or not. Of some... Uh, what's the word? Like combo list, like tog waggle stuff. And against late game or decks that are trying to go later, it, the deck or the game is or our deck is just going to struggle against game plans like that. Finally got there eventually. My God. Um. I guess we will do the naval mine. Trade where you can. I will be honest. I mean, I'm going to assume this is some sort of, like, aggressive druid list. I haven't seen one in a while. Not, at least, within the last couple weeks of testing. So I don't know how this is going to do. We might be okay. Why would you not get rid of that? Do you have another one? That's not good. I mean, fine, I guess. Sure. Um, in that case, I guess we'll play the Devourer of Souls. And we will go ahead and do a Grimoire of Sacrifice while we can actually get some mileage out of it. Yeah, yep, yep. And then you're going to make your copy of your dudes. I, am I just... I guess I'm just playing the control game here. Oddly enough. Yeah, they can go ahead and trade into the Undertaker, but... We're in a weird situation where I'm feeling pretty in control against an aggressive deck, so we might as well lean into that. Yeah, it just appears to be some sort of, like, druid aggro list. Totally fine. This wouldn't... Okay, I was going to say that would normally imply them going face to draw a card, but... I get it. Uh... uh ugh. I guess we'll play the cultists here. Start chipping away into the trog here. Also trying to make our devourer souls really big and scary with a load of interesting death rattles. Do we have a spell to cast? That's a spell. That qualifies. I mean... Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, okay. Any damage that doesn't go up my face is is perfectly fine. Uh, guess we could life tap first. Yeah, we'll play the habeas. Probably just do a death's head so I can get rid of the trog. Oh, yeah. It's not great. Now we're just going to try and hold on to this Gul'dan's Gift and eventually, like, use it to cast a Twisting Nether and hopefully make some mileage out of that. And with the, all of our, uh... Death Head Cultist healing us triggers... Eee, God. I was going to say we have a remarkably high amount of life, but... That is starting to change. Oh, that's very big. Um, I can't kill anything with this, can I? I guess we don't attack and we just keep the Divine Shield. 
I mean, good on an opponent. They're they're doing pretty good old fashioned go wide aggro stuff. Can't really complain. There's not a, and they're not like playing an aggro deck based around any super heavy like theme. You know, they're just doing good stuff. Guess he's gonna pop the divine shield with his face, which is again the correct thing to do. All of this is just ways to gain life and to stall and all that jazz. We are a couple turns off of the Gul'dan's gift into a Twisting Nether, though. They, I think, are going to get some card draw. Yeah. Which isn't great. That helps. Just, again, any way to gain life, just put any buffer between... Well, thanks for that order. Yeah, yeah. Anything to just put bodies on the board to create buffers to get life. Anything. We're just trying to live here. All right. Two more turns. If only that was the first card in hand, and I could get a cultist with reborn. But you know, wishes and butts and all that. What's our opponent doing? Okay. That is a legal option. Perfectly fine, if not terribly exciting option. But yeah, it resolves. Good on him. Okay, they're almost... I was about to say, there's almost certainly a cleaner way they could have done that. But whatever, that's fine. Uh, math is, in fact, for blockers. You know, arguably, I'm kind of okay with you popping that. I mean, Jaraxxus is gaining five life and getting rid of a thing. Don't know if it doesn't it matter. That's like the million dollar question. It's the only option I have, so I'm, I'm sure shit gonna do it. Unfortunately, I think we just die, right? Three, six, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. And then 15 with lethal. Maybe they make a mistake. Oh, right! It was only for a turn. I was wrong. So, uh, we'll just... Hang on. 2, 4, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're technically alive. But, like, a lot of things kill us. Even another one of those Lion's Pride thing. Or, I think that actually does kill us. Doesn't it? Maybe they make mistakes. Doesn't look like it. Ugh. Go for my creature. Don't attack me. Don't attack my face. No! Okay, yeah, they see it. That's fine. I mean, good on our opponent. They played a, a very straight, very upright and honest aggro deck. And to be fair, the gift was in our hand, and next turn we would have casted it for a Twisting Nether and likely spun the game for us and started spitting out Jaraxxus Infernals. They, they did the good thing that you will hear me talk about all the time in my decks, whether I'm playing the aggressive deck or my opponent's playing the aggressive deck. They made me have the thing. It's one of those, if if they were one turn off, I would have won. They just did a good, aggressive game plan. And still, honestly, it's pretty good showing for the list that even with a matchup that might not be the greatest, you can still damn near like win, of course, if you get lucky, but... Hey, that's card games. The fuck are we doing? If you can't accept that, you might be playing the wrong kind of game. But anywho, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and would like to see more in the future. And if you have any sort of questions like I don't have X card, what about Y card? Because if you recommend that, you know, or you say that, you know, I don't think card X is good. If you don't give me a... Uh, uh, a, a card to replace it with, I can't really engage with that. Because you could put f technically like any fucking card in the list. But anywho, again, thank you all for watching. Sub, like, comment, blah, 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 YouTube things. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.